Lost in 1757 in the eastern Solent Channel lies the wreck of a ship which radically changed the design of warships up to and beyond the Battle of Trafalgar. Maritime archaeologist and current licensee is Dr. Dan Pascoe. Well, I can't quite believe it, but I've been diving in protected wreck sites for nearly half my life. I've been a licensee for, I think, 13 years now. I just love it. It's my job and it's what I do for my hobby. And it's just brilliant. It's taken me all over the UK. But my favourite has to be on the south coast in the Solent, where HMS Invincible lies on horsetail side. So much of it survives. It's probably the best preserved mid 18th century warship in the UK. It's preserved from the stern to the bow, from the gun deck down to the floor of ship on the port side. And then the starboard side, that survives too, but in four huge chunks that have broken away from the port side and lie separated just to the north. But if you were to piece it all together, nearly 75% of the ship survives. The Orlock deck was the most incredible part of the ship. I mean, the Orlock deck is where the storerooms are. And on the side of the hull, we had shelves that were just stacked full of artifacts still. Um, we think we found the bosun's storeroom because it had all sorts from um, equipment that was used for kind of just keeping the ship clean. So bosom brushes, like a witch's broom. We had a wooden staved bucket. We found a wonderful sand glass, possibly a 14 second sand glass that was used for uh, measuring the ship's speed. Now the Invincible was one of the fastest ships in the fleet and she was the only ship to have this 14 second sand glass. No other ship was fast enough. The French developed this new warship, 70 gun warship, uh, in the 1740s. And the British, through Admiral Anson, captured Invincible. And Anson realised this was the future of warship design. It took about 10 years to persuade the Navy to start building ships just like Invincible. And eventually they did. And the 74 gun ship went on to become the backbone of the British Navy and all of the most powerful navies in the world. And by the time of the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, so nearly 50 years after Invincible was captured, 50% of the ships on all sides were the 74 gun ships. So they really were the workhorse of all of the most powerful navies in the world. The two most important people when it comes to the wreck of HMS Invincible is Arthur Mack, the fisherman that found it, and John Bingaman, who Arthur teamed up with to investigate the site and excavate it during the 1980s and early 1990s. When John was celebrating his 60th anniversary of diving, we took him out on the Invincible. And it was just brilliant swimming around the wreck with John. We came across this area that had just uncovered and there was like staves of barrels and planks just sort of coming out of the sand in really good condition. And we were both in there trying to just carefully um, hand fan to see what else was there. And we, it, you could just see the excitement in his eyes. It was very important that I uh, continued the work that John did, but also Arthur Mack. And I really wanted his blessing to carry on working on, working on the site, because I knew it, it meant so much to him and, and his team. So they were doing these amazing things, um, not only diving it, but showing off the artifacts. And how can that not inspire anyone? That's exactly what I wanted to do. And I just wanted to carry on their amazing work.